Hi, everybody, and thank you for coming. My name is Mariano Cugnetti, and I'm the CTO at Enter. Uh, and I will drive you through a quick journey uh, across our uh, Enter Cloud Suite product, which is an open stack uh, uh, cloud in Italy. Uh, Enter, my company, uh, where I'm the CTO, uh, is based in Milano, Italy, and uh, was established in 1996. Uh, we uh, have always been an ISP, so playing with data centers, uh, services, uh, data center services and networks was always uh, our business. Um, when we came to the point to create our own cloud services, merging our traditional markets like data center and networks, uh, the choice uh, was OpenStack for its openness. We come from the open source world. Uh, we like the approach. We like the project. Uh, we have been working on OpenStack on the last three years. Um, so we uh, liked all the philosophy inside the community. So we came up with uh, an infrastructure uh, that is now based on both OpenStack and Grizzly. And we have deployed the typical uh, standard, this is very important, standard OpenStack services. We are running computing on KVM. Uh, we are running storage, uh, both uh, ephemeral, on, uh, on the directly on nodes. We are running block storage with Ceph, and we are running uh, object storage on, on Swift. Um, we also decide to uh, avoid any vendor lock-in, and uh, we decided to uh, stay open source also on the network side. So we started with VLANs, our Grizzly environment, environments run on VLANs as an overlay technology, but now we have switched to VXLAN for the Havana uh, installation. So we provide the standard uh, no homebrewed solution for OpenStack, a running Neutron, Nova, Keystone, uh, Horizon also, Swift, and Cinder. And we use Silometer for accounting and then billing by our uh, own uh, billing systems. And that's already running in production. We think there's a lot of talk about um, moving workloads, interoperability, and uh, sometimes it ends up about talking about moving VMs. Uh, we don't believe this will be the future of, uh, will be a solution to, for this problem. This kind of approach is going to change in the, the next months and next year. And uh, thanks for, to new technologies like Docker. And in the meantime, we think that interoperability between uh, private and public uh, or different uh, cloud platforms will be provided by interfaces. And that's why we decided to provide, obviously, API access to developers to develop their own infrastructures or their own interfaces or provide the CLI access. But we also provided different interfaces. One of them is the most known interface for OpenStack, which is Horizon. We run Juno uh, Horizon in production. And we had partnered with uh, Scalar. Scalar is a very smart company that provides an abstraction level, an application to handle uh, roles inside farms, virtual farms, that may spread across clouds and regions, uh, different clouds and different regions, making very easy for the users even skilled ones or, non or uh, beginners to cope with roles, infrastructure, large deployments, uh, small deployments as well. And we are pretty happy with that. And more interfaces we are developing uh, about, I uh, will talk um, later on. And this also is in production. Since we come from the ISP world and we are an, a telecommunication operator, we also believe that network is very important. Without the network, you, you cannot have, without a, a very powerful network, a, a very reliable network, you cannot have any cloud working. So we decided to uh, leverage uh, a lot of different uh, capabilities inside our uh, cloud. As I told you before, we use VXLAN in, uh, in our neutral environment as an overlay networking uh, technology. 
we have enabled uh, load balancing as a service, but especially VPN as a service uh, to connect private, virtual private data centers to real, physical, or virtual in on-premise data centers. Um, we are planning to do it also not only by IPsec but also by MPLS. And we have partnered with uh, uh, the main European NAPs to provide access to our uh, regions, which I will show you after. Uh, so we are directly connected to the Italian Internet Exchange, the uh, Netherlands Internet Exchange, the German one, the French one, and the UK one. And on top of the network, the, we provided any cast IPs to, for some services, for some core services that requested low latency and uh, uh, easy of access. And this is in production already. Uh, you, cannot have any, uh, you cannot talk about cloud if you're not talking about distributed systems. And that's why it was obvious for us moving from one first installation in our data center in Milan to a distributed one. That's why, at the moment, we are running in uh, three regions. And by Q3, uh, we will have five regions running, uh, positioned in Milan, Italy, Frankfurt, Germany, Amsterdam, Netherlands, London, UK, and Paris, uh, France. Uh, all of these uh, regions are connected by a 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet ring, which is dedicated to us and we, which we bought directly for, from uh, Belgacom International Service carry, Carrier Services. And this is already in production. And last year, I remember um, Randy Bias talking about OpenStack not as a cloud platform. OpenStack is a uh, is like uh, the kernel is for Linux. So it's a core on which you can build a lot of services on top of it. And that's what we did. We started with OpenStack. We, we deployed OpenStack, a pure OpenStack installation. But then we moved to the second step, which was to deliver more services on top of our OpenStack installation. When you, have, when you have to cope with distributed systems, the most reliable and efficient and uh, um, affordable uh, load balancing system you can uh, use is DNS balancing. We decided it was uh, more convenient for us and more efficient to develop our own DNS engine. So we are not running on power DNS or bind. We developed our own DNS, and we provide APIs so we can provide a DNS as a service to customers. Obviously, we provide also an interface, a web interface to manage your zones. You can create standard records, uh, but you also can create smart records. And you can create load balancing records. You can assign different IPs to the same record. And when an IP or an instance or a load balancer goes down, that record is re erased and removed from the pool automatically. You have health checks you can configure. You just check the availability of your service. And then when they go down, the, record, the records are updated. You can have HA, high availability. You can uh, define a primary, a primary endpoint. And when the primary endpoint goes down, you can have a secondary. And if you use auto scaling on the secondary, you can, you can keep the bill low on the secondary until it's needed to grow your infrastructure. And then you can have geo DNS. Uh, most of technology used for doing geo DNS rely upon uh, geo light, geo IP, which are tables. Uh, the, IP, the IP addressing market has got so fast that any table may be very slow to update and give uh, unreliable responses. That's why we decided to rely upon the most uh, reliable technology, which is BGP. And we use BGP to route any cast IPs directly to uh, our DNSs. So we provide one single IP for our DNS, which is routed to the closest DNS to the user making the query to the DNS. And the answers are based upon the location on, of where the DNS is located. So you may have different answers based on the location of the users. 
You can have GeoDNS combined with the load balancing or HA, so you can play with this uh, kind of software. And this is already in production. Obviously, when you have an infrastructure which is stable and distributed, you can play with a lot of things. And this ca here comes the very interesting part. Uh, we are partnering with uh, um, a network provider uh, which has almost around 200 pops around the world in order to deliver a service, a CDN service. Since we provide instances with web servers and we provide object storage, we have a lot of content we make available to a lot of customers. We provide DNS all over Europe, so users can be routed accordingly uh, in Europe. But what if the user, like we live in Milano, so we have a lot of fashion companies, so they are uh, worldwide distributed. What if they have large contents that must be accessed very quickly from all over the world? Uh, here comes the CDN services. You can just put your files inside your instances, or you can put them into the object storage, make the container public, which is very easy, because in Juno, you can just click a button and have a container. Uh, and in Ju Horizon Juno, you can just click a button, button, and you can have it publicly accessible, and then you're done. Uh, the CDN collects the data, and you have uh, uh, made all the contents available. And this is especially useful when uh, you have large contents to distribute. Uh, fashion websites have high-res uh, images that take a lot of time to be loaded, and so they are uh, taking a lot of advantage of this kind of service. The other one is email service. Once you have a distributed infrastructure, you need to find someone that is finally providing an open source solution to manage a distributed email system, which takes advantage of object storage for long-term archiving of email and attachments, but also has a very fast level of caching inside the instances, taking advantage of the IOPS you can get on block storage. Uh, which, on our case, happen to be uh, on, a on, on a provision base. You can choose whatever IOPS uh, tier do you, do you want to use. And so you can have a distributed email system, and you can, have, you can support any possible downtime in a region. You have everything replicated. Once a region or a load balancer or an instance goes down, you just have to get back all the information for the object storage, rebuild the cache, or keep them distributed and aligned, and you're done. And this is going to come. DNS is already production, and CDN and email services are going to come uh, by the end of 2014. The next step is, uh, since we face almost monthly uh, a, a, a cut on uh, Amazon and uh, Rackspace or Google uh, uh, prices, you have to be smarter to run your infrastructure. And that's where it comes to open compute. We think that hardware is still a very relevant component for the pricing of uh, cloud services. Uh, open compute is approaching the, correct, the right way, the, the, open, the same open stack way, to the problem, just uh, break it in pieces and rebuild it. And that's what we are doing. We are redesigning our hardware architecture in order to be uh, less expensive, more efficient, and smarter than the traditional uh, servers. And this also is coming in March 2015. So. Uh, 15 minutes are very uh, short, a short, very short time for a demo. I decided just to give you a quick over, uh, oversee of what we do. If you want a demo, just come to the booth uh, E8, which is over there. And we will be happy to explain to you how it works and to show you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Well,